We don't want. Well, it's, they're gonna know you got green hair. What? You got green hair. What? It must have been that rain outside. Yes, yeah, the acid rain. The acid rain. Yeah, the hydronium ion is. Oh, wait, no, it isn't. They just had the Simpsons on last night with acid rain, and it melts the bowling jacket off of them. Ooh, hey, <laughs> nice. Uh, but leaves the other clothes intact. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. All right. So um, we got a lot of energy this morning, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Hey. No, that's well, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. It's a connection. There's a connection there. Thermochemistry is the study of energy in reactions. Did we ever actually say good morning? Good morning, guys. Morning, guys. Mr. Kane here. Mrs. G, next to the green-haired Mr. Kane. Okay, so because we had a lot of energy, we forgot to mention that we're right. doing thermochemistry yes. and say hello first. Yeah. Thermochemistry. Um, but we're doing thermochemistry, which is the study of energy and uh, heat and reactions, right? Right, and the transfer of energy, yep. Okay. Uh, Describe how energy relates to chemistry. That's an easy goal, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Explain what is meant by enthalpy and enthalpy changes. Oh, okay, so if you can define what enthalpy is, you can define what a change in enthalpy is. Correct, and enthalpy is just a fancy way of saying energy at constant pressure. Okay. Um, be able to use energy at constant pressure of a reaction to calculate the heat involved for any mass of a substance used in a chemical reaction. Ooh, that smells like a computation, Mr. King. Uh, I smell stoichiometry yep. coming here. Uh, describe how calorimetry determines enthalpy. Okay. Okay, so how do we measure enthalpy? Yeah. Uh, just to distinguish between exothermic and endothermic reactions using graphs, diagrams, and balanced chemical equations. Uh huh, that sounds easy enough. Yeah, that's not too hard. Uh, calculate the enthalpy of a reaction from lab data and a calorimeter. Ooh, more computations. Need a calculator. Mm -hmm. Calculate the heat lost or gained by any material by using its specific heat capacity. Okay. Okay, so since we're talking about energy in chemistry, okay, energy in reactions, we probably have to first talk about energy in the real world so we've got an analogy. Right, because this is the macroscopic world, which is in physics, it's going to be potential energy kinetics, submicroscopic in chemistry, it's going to be bonds and stuff like that. Right. But the basic idea, which uh, most people have had in their, uh, in their middle school classes, is potential energy. Mm -hmm. uh, potential energy is energy due to position. All right, so uh, a ball has potential energy simply because we hold it up in the air. Right. And the amount of potential energy that it has is related to how far it is off the ground. Uh, we can calculate that, but that's not part of what we're nah, doing here. So that's physics. So we won't get into that. Um, now, kinetic energy is a little bit in it different. And kinetic energy is energy due to movements, like what my mouth is doing right now. Right, the energy of motion. Right. So if a ball is let go from that same height and it falls towards the earth, it has kinetic energy while it is moving. When it hits the ground, it has no potential energy. All right. And isn't all the potential energy transferred to kinetic, right? With some loss to friction and stuff like that. But the main idea is a transfer of, not a gain or loss of excess, just a transfer of. Right. The amount of kinetic energy the ball had while it was falling was equal to the amount of potential energy that it had while it was held above the ground. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Potential energy in chemistry is a little different. Bond energy. The energy found in a chemical bond is potential energy. So what we've got here is a couple of uh, Mickey Mouses, huh? Looks like water molecules to me, but Mickey Mouse is fine. All right. And so we've got, um, so right here we've got a chemical bond, right? Right, between the oxygen and the hydrogen. And that's where the energy is? Yes. That's where the potential energy it's, is, yes. right? Yes. So if you're going to do a chemical reaction, you are going to break those bonds between the oxygen and the hydrogen. Right, Mr. King? That's correct. Okay. Decomposition of water. Okay. Right. So if we decompose water, you break those bonds between hydrogen and oxygen, and the atoms rearrange. They form new ones, and new they, bonds. They form new bonds, and that new bond turns out to be um, uh, found here, here, and here. So we've got three new bonds formed from four, mm -hmm. and we've got a little bit of extra energy, don't we? Yep. And that little bit of extra energy turns into temperature. Ah. Uh -huh. Right? Yep. Very nice graphics, Mr. King. And if they weren't wiggling, you wouldn't know that there was temperature there. Okay, so there's a form of, in other words, there's a form of potential energy and kinetic energy in chemistry. 
Potential energy is the energy of the bonds. Kinetic energy is the energy of the motion of the vibration of the molecules, right? Correct. Okay. Okay, so temperature is a measure of kinetic energy and heat is the transfer. Correct. Heat is kind of like more of a conduit from warm to cool. I think that works, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so heat can be transferred from one substance to another. Uh, which is the which is part of the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, energy must be conserved in any transfer. If one object gains energy, another object has to lose an equal amount of energy. So you're never actually creating or losing energy. You're just transferring it from one thing to another. That's correct. The yeah. same amount. Mm -hmm. And that measurement of energy is measured in joules or in kilojoules. Those are the units of Energy. energy that we use. The standard unit is joules. The uh, uh, Typically we talk about kilojoules when we talk about too many yeah, joules. Yeah, if it's very big, it's, it's going to be in kilojoules. Ooh, water molecules. Water molecules. Uh, notice the distance between them isn't very great, but they are vibrating a bit. So they got to be liquid water molecules, correct? No, uh, they're not switching places though. Oh yeah, they're not flowing. So what is that, ice then? Th this must be solid, yeah. Ooh, ice. So we check the temperature, 157 degrees Kelvin. Oh, a negative 116 degrees Celsius. All right. So this looks like it's probably a solid, right? So it's cold ice. So it's cold ice. <laughs> is there yeah. such a thing? Cold ice. Right, if you can have hot tea, you can have cold ice. All right. Uh, if we want, we could turn it into a liquid. So that's liquid water. Mm -hmm. So notice that liquid water, the molecules are actually moving in between. Ooh, I think we got evaporation. <gasps> Look at that. One's trying to escape. Is he going to be able to escape? Um, I think he's condensing. Oh, closed system equilibrium. Yep. Oh, there we go. Condensed. Mm -hmm. Poor thing. And one more is trying to get away there. Well, that didn't get away. Oh, there's one. Got away. Evaporation. So you actually have evaporation. There's another evaporation probable equilibrium going on. Ooh, we've There's got a condensation. Mm -hmm. That's kind of neat to show that they escape like that. But we've got a nice fluid here, right? Yep. Uh, and the point of this is that at a higher temperature, at 328 degrees Kelvin. 55. Okay, so 55 degrees Celsius. Yep. So this is kind of hot, right? Yeah. And 55 degrees is much higher than room temperature. Yeah, it is. Um, now, if we want, we could turn this into a gas by just hitting the gas button here. 809. 809. This is, this is definitely hot water. It's 536. Yeah, I'm that's doing this right, right? that's hot stuff. Science, yeah. Uh huh. This is uh, this is definitely very, 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 very hot steam, right? Yeah. Uh, and as steam, the big difference is that a they're moving faster, but b they're also farther apart from each yes. other. Yes. Right. And the, when they hit each other, they actually bounce. Yeah. All right. Temperature, a measure of the average kinetic energy of particles. So of course, the higher the temperature, the faster they're moving. Right, yeah. The higher the temperature, the faster they're moving. If you kind of uh, uh, cross your eyes at that picture in the corner there, uh, you're going to get a good idea what temperature is, what the temperature of the system is. Now, some of those molecules are moving faster than others, so it's not the average temperature unless you cross your eyes at it. Don't try and concentrate too hard. All right, heat always transfers from areas of high temperature to areas of lower temperature. Okay, heat transfers from mm -hmm. warm to cool. All right, so we're going to talk about enthalpy today, uh, a little bit more in depth. Enthalpy is the total energy of the system. It has a symbol of H. Mm -hmm. Capital H. Yes. And there's no way to know about all of the energy in a system, because if you're going to know about all the energy in a system, you're going to know about all the electrons. And yeah, it's really hard to measure the individual energy of each substance in a reaction. Right. But we can measure a change in energy. Or, right. I'm sorry, the change in enthalpy. Um, and we abbreviate that with a delta capital H. Right. It's right. usually going to be the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants. Right. Which makes it easy to do the calculation. Yeah. Um, delta H, uh, the change in energy is measured in kilojoules traditionally. Yeah. Because that's traditionally true. we're talking about lots of energy. Yeah. Right? Uh, and uh, we've got a good example of, uh, of an energy change here. So this is just a different temperature iron, correct? Right, this is a different temperature iron. When a blacksmith works iron, um, it actually changes f physical properties right, so based on how hot it is. Right, horseshoe or the sword or whatever. Exactly, and uh, they, want temperature, uh, they want a temperature of about 1100 degrees Kelvin when they're doing this work. Yeah. 
Uh, and it turns out to be from about room temperature iron to about uh, the right temperature iron. It turns out to be about 20.1 kilojoules of energy. So change in enthalpy for a piece of iron to go from 300 Kelvin to 1100 Kelvin, for a mole of iron to go from 300 Kelvin to 1100 Kelvin, is 20.1 kilojoules. Right, which, okay. is, which is a lot of energy. Yeah, that is. That's got to be pretty hot to make that thing malleable. Mm -hmm. All right, so typical processes of reactions. There are only two types. It's either exothermic or endothermic. There is no third choice. Right, so you're, you're exothermic, so uh, exo means out of, so that means the energy would be flowing out of that reaction into the surroundings. Correct. Uh, so an exothermic reaction might be kind of like that sodium acetate demo we did earlier this year, right? Yeah, because it got warm. It gets warm, yeah. right, um, when, it's, when the sodium acetate crystallizes. Um, the so the surroundings get warmer, right? Heat, light, vibrations, explosions. Yeah. Have we done any explosions lately? No, we haven't done many explosions. All right. They told me I couldn't do that this year, remember? <laughs> For with exothermic, the delta H is recorded as a negative value. Well, the negative sign just tells you out, basically, right? It just tells you direction. There is no such thing as negative energy. Right, it just tells you which direction the energy is flowing. It just tells you the direction it's and leaving, how much. It's leaving the reaction. It's just an indicator of which way the energy is going. Right. Uh, endothermic, um, endo means into or inside of, so the energy is flowing into the reaction from the surroundings. Okay. So an endothermic is going to feel cool. Because it's absorbing energy from the surroundings. Like when I used to play sport, they used to have those cold packs. Yeah. Right? And they break open the little bag inside the bag and you'd get a cold pack and that was an endothermic reaction. Well, ice melting must be endothermic. Yeah, ice melting itself is endothermic, right? right? Cuz it's absorbing, be absorbing energy, energy from the surroundings. Right. Uh, and the delta H there is positive. Tells you direction. Tells okay. you that uh, the actual uh, chemicals are absorbing the energy. All right. Ooh, here is an energy diagram. We promised that we were going to do diagrams, didn't we? Yep, here it is. Okay, so I'm seeing if I read this right. I've got reactants over here on the left side having a certain amount of energy. It looks like 150 kilojoules. Yes, we'll go with that. All right. So reactants on the left, products on the right. And I'm seeing products over here, and they look like they've only got about, let's say, 50 kilojoules. 50, yeah. So what's my delta H here? Well, delta H is usually going to be equal to the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants. Okay, so products minus reactants. 50 minus 150. Notice you're going to get a negative value. You're going to get a negative 100 kilojoules. So this system has, this system is exothermic. Right, because negative energy is uh, exothermic. What the heck is this up here? It's, uh, it, it has to gain some energy before it loses? It has to get over an energy hill, which is called an activation energy. Okay, so that's activation energy? Uh-huh, and that's the minimum amount of energy that the reactants have to get over to become products. Oh, okay. So, in other words, if I want to start some gasoline on fire, I have to l give it a match. Yes. Right. And what's the C here? C is enthalpy. Right. So that is actually what the change in enthalpy is. Correct. That's that what is, you just calculated. So that would be my 100 kilojoules. Let's see if we can predict the next one. Oh, gosh. This is a hard one. This, Let's is, be see. this is better than a 50-50 <laughs> shot if we got one right, right? The last one was exothermic. There's only two options. I'll bet this is going to be endothermic. Well, let's figure it out. Let's figure it out logically. The okay. reactants start at 100 kilojoules, right? And they are on the left again. And the products are... I'm just going to call it about 300, yeah. right? So the products are about 300. So you said that delta H is calcu ooh, delta H is calculated as H of the products minus H of the reactants. So products minus reactants. Uh, so it's about three hundred minus one hundred. So delta H is going to be about two hundred, and I get a positive number this time. Correct. So positive v values of delta H turn out to be endoth endothermic. Right, because it's going to take more energy to break the reactants. Mm -hmm than to make the products. That means you're going to have to have an external source there, mm -hmm. something to put into the reactants, electricity, fire, a match, whatever. And it looks like this one also has a certain amount of activation energy. Yeah, here. that one has a big activation, way bigger this than the last one. Activation energy. So this this stuff is pretty stable then if it needs a lot of ac activation energy. And the, the point to this one, this one's going to feel cold too at the end. It's not going to feel hot because it's storing energy. 
it's absorbing energy from the surroundings, that means the surroundings get cold. Right. 